Welcome to Cloud on Out Plus, your source for exclusive online videos and online events for AWS professionals. My name is Andreas, and today I demonstrate how to collect and analyze audit logs with CloudTrail. I will start with some basics and we will dive into the very details later. Did you enable CloudTrail for your AWS accounts already? You should, not only for being able to answer future questions about security incidents, but also to answer day-to-day -day questions of an account administrator. I will start with two demos. First, I will show you how to analyze CloudTrail logs with CloudWatch Insights. And then we do a little bit more advanced stuff and analyze the CloudWatch, uh, CloudTrail logs with Athena, which is a, bit, a little bit more complicated, but also more powerful. And then we talk about some details of CloudTrail that you need to know about. We talk about blind spots. We talk about extensive costs when configured not correctly. And last but not least, I will show you how to do real-time alerts with CloudTrail um, based on the SIS AWS Foundation's security standard. Let's start with analyzing CloudTrail audit logs with the help of CloudWatch Log Insights. So this is the AWS Management Console and I've configured CloudTrail here. And basically the most important thing is I'm sending the audit logs to an S3 bucket but also to a CloudWatch log group. So that's what happens here. So let's jump to CloudWatch logs and I'm using what is called logs insights to query the data because it gives me a more advanced user interface and more search and analyzing uh, capabilities. So what you get here, so I've selected the log group here, which uh, contains the CloudTrail audit logs. And if we do a query, you get just um, yeah, a lot of log messages basically in here um, with a lot of details about the request to AWS APIs. And what's interesting, if you want to analyze the data is you can show the fields, so the data fields of all those log messages. Um, and that helps to uh, see what's in there, what's in the structured data to basically answer your questions. Okay. The first question that I want to answer with the help of a query is, which AWS accounts, uh, which regions are in use within that AWS account? Uh, so that's the first question I want to answer and I've uh, prepared a query uh, for that that I'm now pasting in here. So what, what I am doing is, um, I'm using an aggregator function. I'm counting by the AWS region. So what does that mean? That means um, every, Every um, audit log has an AWS region field, and we are now counting that yeah, to basically get a summary of all the regions used within the account. So let me run that query. Um, takes a little while. Uh, we already see some results popping up here. So what you can see here, this is the count, the number of basically API requests that CloudTrail was collecting for the different regions. So we're using 12 different regions here. Um, and you can even jump to visualization to see which regions are um, used um, or at least have the most API requests, um, which is the West one in, in our example here. Okay, so that's, that's the first one. That can be interesting to find out uh, which regions are used. Um, let's do the next one. And by the way, I will put all those queries uh, into the video show notes um, so that you can run those queries on your own if you want to or modify them a little bit, maybe even better. So the next one is a little bit different. I'm filtering, I'm adding a filter. And I filter for user identity type I am user. So I want to only get audit logs from I am users, not from I am roles uh, or what, what have you, but only for I am users. Why? Because many organizations have the requirement that I am users are not used at all or only in very rare circumstances. And this is a good way to find out if someone in this account uses IAM users. Again, I'm using um, the aggregator function. I'm counting the user identity, um, the, the, the Amazon resource names of those um, to find out which users are in use here. So let's run that query and see what the result is uh, from that. So the result is there is one user in this account, GitHub with xcloudonow.io, 
which is in use. Um, this is used for, as, as the name implies, for, for GitHub Actions. And this is the only IAM user in this account. Okay, so that makes sense from my perspective. Okay, the next thing, um, the next query is a little bit different. Um, I'm uh, using a filter again, and we are filtering by the event source. And the event source is signing amazonaws.com. And basically what this gives us is who logged into the AWS management console. So that might be an interesting question to answer as well. Um, so let's run this query. And what we get back is a list with, um, in this case, uh, this is I am roles, or it is assumed I am roles to be, to be more uh, precise. So you can see this is Michael and me and Stefan. So we are logging into this AWS account and you can see that here. Okay, so that's interesting uh, thing to answer, I would say. Um, let's go to a comp little bit different thing. So that might be something interesting after security incident. So, or you want to know which IAM policies in my account have been changed? So this is an interesting question. So who modified basically um, the authorization part uh, of your uh, cloud infrastructure? And the query I'm doing for that is a little bit um, different because what I do is I have a more comp complicated filter. I filter again by event source, which is identity and access management, iam.amazonaws.com. And now I'm listing um, different event names. So attach group policy, attach role policy, uh, create policy, create policy version. So those are all the IAM actions that are basically allowing you to modify or to attach an IAM policy to a role, a user, or a group. So I want to know about all those changes. Okay, uh, let's run this. So what we get back here now is we don't get back um, aggregated data or something. We just get back the events. Okay, so one event or two events are popping up here. So those are the events where someone changed um, an IAM policy, but uh, basically put a role policy, so an inland policy, and you can now dive into that, see basically what happened, so exactly which IAM policy was modified and stuff like that. So this is really for um, yeah, debugging or um, having a look, look into what was going on after a security incident. The next query is similar to that. I want to detect changes to security groups. So did someone um, modify the firewall rules, uh, security groups. So the query is similar. Uh, the only thing that's different is the event source, which is easy to in that example. And then of course the event names, which are authorizing security egress and ingress and also revoking security group egress or ingress. So that's very similar. And uh, if I run that query, I get the events uh, showing me who changed the security group in which way. So that's basically the question that I can answer um, with those information. So in that case, um, let's see, an assumed role, so a specific uh, I'm role was changing and it did a change to the security group and opened port 3306. Um, so that is the information that we get from here, which is, uh, I would say, quite interesting. Okay, um, one more thing. Um, if someone accidentally leaks their AWS credentials, for example, the classic way to do so is on GitHub, how do you find out if someone was using those credentials to access resources or modify resources in your AWS accounts? Um, there's a query for that. Basically, you can filter the access key ID and put in the access key that was uh, leaked and then run that query and what you get back is, um, yeah, was someone using that access key within the specific, a specified time frame? And that could, um, yeah, that could give you a feeling <laughs> how bad the situation is that you're in and which resources have been modified or even which data might have been leaked. So it seems like no one was using that leaked access key in my example. Um, so I'm happy about that. The next demo is about querying the same audit logs, but those that are not stored in CloudWatch logs, but on S3. So why is that an interesting thing? Because um, you remember that I've configured my CloudTrail logs to go to S3 and to CloudWatch logs. And when you do the S3 option, 
you can basically have one S3 bucket that collects the audit logs from all your AWS accounts. So you can also analyze them in one central place. We'll talk about that later, but that is why Athena is a good way to analyze uh, those CloudTrail logs as well when they are stored on S3. So let's have a look into that. So the first thing when using Athena is you need to create a table. What Athena is doing is it analyzes structured data, in our case it's JSON data, stored on S3 ad hoc. So you can run queries with a SQL-like syntax uh, on, S on data that is stored on S3 and Athena will just crawl through all that data and analyze it. So that's what's possible uh, with Athena and CloudTrail logs as well. Um, you will find all the code in the show notes, so check that out. Um, um, I've extended what AWS has in their documentation a little, little bit, and we'll talk about that. So what this first query is doing is it creates a table. So you can use that in your own account to create a table with a th for Athena being able to analyze your CloudTrail data. So all that is the structure of the data. So you need to define the structure of the JSON um, data that is coming in. So you can just keep it as it is. That's what comes from the AWS documentation. What is interesting is the partitioned part. So CloudTrail stores your data on a three in a certain format. They use a certain key schema to partition the data. So for example, you will find a timestamp, the account ID, and even the AWS region within the path or the key basically of the objects. And what we do here is we use partition prote um, protection, which allows you to crawl through all that data without needing to add partitions uh, manually for your table, which is normally a thing you need to do with Athena. So this is a really cool trick, I think, in my opinion. So what I've been doing is I've configured that for the S3 bucket here. The S3 bucket is called Wittix Cloud Trail, where we store all the logs. And then I have three protections for the partitions. One is the timestamp, then we have the account and the region. And what you can see here is um, Athena will automatically try to find all the JSON files within that structure. The timestamp, it starts uh, from the beginning of 2020 until now. Um, the accounts, I have an enum defined here and here it, there goes in a list of all the AWS accounts that, that we own. And the same is for, uh, I have another enum for the region where I paste in all the region identifiers that we use. So by doing that, Athena is just crawling through all that data automatically without anything uh, of any partitions management needed. So that's very helpful. Um, so I highly recommend to do that for uh, CloudTrail data. Okay, uh, you will find the details uh, in the show notes as I promised. And now uh, let's create the table. Uh, let's do that again because <laughs> yeah <laughs> this is always a shocker so basically the first time you click the button doesn't work <laughs> okay so here's the table um the cloud trail logs um, partitioned table and uh, now we can query the data so let's do a little one let's do a preview so we're running the data and it's, it's basically the same data that we had in cloudwatch logs but now it's stored in s3 um, so it runs the query, it takes maybe a little bit longer than with CloudWatch Logs Insights, um, but should return a value soon. Yeah, so now we get back. Um, this is the uh, CloudTrail data from all AWS accounts that we own aggregated. And of course, we want to dive into a little bit more detail, have a more advanced query than that. Okay, so let's do that. Um, I've prepared a query here already. And this is the same query that we have been doing before. We are querying um, the changes of security group. So who made changes to a security group? And uh, it's basically a very similar query. Now it's SQL style. So we have select from default CloudTrail logs. So this is our table. Then we have the event source, EC2, same as we had before. And then event name in, and we have the list of the event names, also right, security egress, and so on, you know that already. And uh, I'm also filtering by account and by timestamp to make use of those partitions um, of the data uh, so that Athena doesn't have to go through all um, the data. 
and I'm also limiting everything to 50 results um, also to make sure we're not crawling through too many data. Okay, let's run the query and the same problem. I have to click the button twice. Uh, don't know <laughs> why this doesn't get fixed. Okay, so now we have the events and now it says, this is the user. It's again an IAM role and um, it revoked security group ingress um, and so on. So basically that's the same data that we have in here. Um, I agree maybe the user interface is a little bit clumsy, um, but you get the same data out of it. And I think it's really cool to use Athena because you can query not only one AWS account, but all your AWS accounts, given the fact that you store all your CloudTrail data in one S3 bucket, which is very helpful, I would say. Next, let's dive a little bit into the technical details of CloudTrail and tips and tricks um, that I, I want to share with you. Okay, first of all, the question is, how do you configure CloudTrail in your AWS accounts? And this is my recommended way of doing things. So first of all, I would encourage you to create one CloudTrail trail within the management account of your AWS organization. And what you can do there is you can enable an organization-wide trail. That means this trail will collect all the audit logs from all the accounts that belong to this uh, or AWS organization, to your organization. This makes it much more simpler to manage CloudTrail because you don't have to add a CloudTrail trail into each and every AWS account. Um, it just collects all the data with only one CloudTrail. And as a plus, the member accounts cannot remove that CloudTrail. They cannot deactivate that in any way. You don't have to protect that in any way. So that's what I think is very helpful. And then I would recommend, that's my personal thing, I would send um, the CloudTrail logs to a CloudWatch log group in the same account, so in the management account. But I will also have a separate AWS account in the organization. I often call it the Vault account, um, where basically this is a very high security level account in your organization. And there is a security and uh, a S3 bucket in there to, um, yeah, to send the CloudWatch logs in. So that allows you to make sure that no one can basically modify those uh, CloudTrail logs later, or it's at least very hard to do so. So that's my recommended way of configuring CloudTrail. Next, I want to talk about the blind spot because in general, CloudTrail captures so-called management events. So some also say the control plane events of almost all AWS services, 99%. But the problem is there are blind spots as well. So let me tell you a story. So I was working for a consulting client of us and someone from their team leaked their AWS credentials. And then we got an email from AWS. They basically deactivated those credentials and they told us we need to go through a list of things to make sure everything in the account um, is fine. And I was going through the CloudTrail logs. And what I wanted to answer is the question, did someone use those credentials that were leaked on GitHub to access our sensitive data stored in an S3 bucket? And what I found out is that unfortunately, CloudTrail cannot answer that question or the logs cannot answer that question by default. Why? Because by default, CloudTrail does not capture data events. So it does not capture reading and writing to your S3 buckets, for example. And this is a bummer. By the way, the same is true for many other AWS services that have an API that you can use to access and modify the data. So uh, for example, DynamoDB and so on. So the thing is, um, CloudTrail supports data events for S3 and Lambda, but you have to enable this separately. We'll talk about that in a second. But then there are a lot of other services out there. So DynamoDB, SQS, SNS, where do not even have the option to collect those audit logs. They're just missing. So I think that is a problem because you have no way to get an audit log, for example, the data access in your DynamoDB tables. Okay, that's something you have to be aware of. Um, so CloudTrail covers the management events and only some data events. That's important. But then the problem is there's another problem with the data events, and that's what we will have a look into next. The problem with CloudTrail data events is 
extensive costs. And I made a pricing calculator to show you the problem. So if you enable CloudTrail data events for S3 or Lambda, you will pay a fee for every data event that CloudTrail captures. And this is significant. So um, take a look at this one here, the extra charge. So um, basically, when writing data to S3, you pay a premium for enabling uh, CloudTrail data events of about 20%. And when reading data, the premium is 250% roundabout. So that makes a really huge effect. So that means if you have data analytics workloads, for example, running in, account, in an account where you go through terabytes and very, very many, many small files in the three buckets to crunch the data, enabling CloudTrail data events for a three is not a good idea. At least you have to exclude those buckets. And that's a bummer. Same is true for Lambda. Uh, also a, a huge extra charge on the Lambda invocation costs by ena enabling those data events. So I recommend it to enable data events, but you have to be aware of the costs. And that might be no problem at all in your scenario, but it could have a huge impact on your, on your AWS bill. So be very careful with that. There's one more thing that I want to show you, and this is about getting real-time alerts um, based on the CloudTrail audit logs in your account. And um, one, one reason to do so is the SIS AWS Foundations uh, standard. Um, for example, if you have um, Security Hub enabled in your account, you will get findings um, out of that. So this is just uh, a recommendation or security best practices for your AWS account. And they define how to do real-time alerts um, based on CloudTrail logs as well. So how does it work? So basically, it's, uh, it's not too complicated. You have CloudTrail, which sends the log messages to a CloudWatch log group, where you define a metric filter. And the metric filter basically analyzes the log messages in a similar way that we did in the first two demos and sends data to a CloudWatch metric, um, basically a counter. And then you can define a CloudWatch alarm based on that metric that notifies you in certain circumstances. So that's how it works. And um, we have a CloudFormation template that you can use to set things up. I will link that in the show notes. And um, basically, I want to show you the results of that in, in an AWS account. Okay, so this is the CloudWatch log group where CloudTrail sends all the audit logs to. And what you can see here is there are 13 metric filters defined for that log group. Let's dive into that. And here you find the metric filters that basically are defined by the SIS um, AWS benchmark. And we've just um, implemented them here. So for example, this is um, um, a filter pattern that searches for did someone create or modify a cloud trail in the account? So of course, that's a security relevant information. And whenever that happens, it sends a metric value of one to a CloudWatch metric. And there's then a CloudWatch alarm that will notify us about that problem. So that is how you can do things. So there is, um, there is um, yeah, this metric that counts uh, for that. So let's quickly jump to um, the CloudWatch alarms. So in the alarm section, uh, we will find um, a lot of those um, CloudWatch alarms. For example, um, this one here goes to um, count of management console uh, authentication failures. So there's an alarm for that. And it basically says whenever there is a data point in here, whenever there's a metric value um, higher than zero, notify me. So that's basically the way that works. That can be helpful to give you real-time insights um, my experience with those metric filters defined in the SIS standard is you need to do them to get green check, <laughs> check boxes on your security benchmark. But the problem is many of them are not very relevant. Many of them produce a lot of false positives. Um, one example is with multi-factor authentication. If you use AWS SSO, SSO manages MFA, 
Um, but basically, the CloudTrail events do not know about that. You will get a lot of false positives in that example. So, yeah, take them with a grain of salt. Um, but yeah, it's a security best practice that many uh, of you have to implement, and that's how it works. And what we do is we use some of them, a subset of them, and deactivate that one that doesn't, doesn't make sense in certain scenarios. You can reach out to us and the community about this topic or other AWS-related questions at any time. So visit community.cloudonow.io and ask your questions. We are looking forward to hear from you. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to rate this video if you learned something new. Your feedback helps us to produce relevant videos. So reach out to us via email or Twitter. You will find the details in the video show notes. We are back in one week. Thanks a lot for your support.